All right, guys, here's a really great drill for uh, following the orb of the head. What I'm using here is a, a sand-filled weighted ball. This is a, a three-pound ball, widely used for Pilates or for core training. So there's no danger if you drop it, it's not gonna damage your floors or your feet. And all we do is we begin with that ball between both hands. And what we're looking to do is use one hand to effectively roll the ball around the other hand. Roll it around the other hand. So this ball is in effect being pushed around the support hand. And we can switch from one hand to the other until that becomes quite fluid. And then we start to move both so that both are working with either surface of the arm or one hand and one arm. This basic exercise is widely used in a lot of the Chinese martial arts. You'll see that in sort of Qi Sao actions or uh, Wing Chun, even in push hands in Tai Chi. But it's a really great exercise for teaching unthinking, reflexive following and contouring of the head. This kind of work can become quite addictive and it's self-correcting in its own right because if I start to perform this in a very tense way, fatigue will just make me relax that to a very natural motion. So that's a great basic exercise using just a very small weighted ball. And next I'll show you a variation using a, a larger uh, football or a soccer ball or a basketball. Now even more common is any sort of generic sport of ball. This is a basic basketball. So I can start with the same type of flow. And this is much easier now because this is quite large uh, compared to the other ball. It's much lighter, but it also more closely replicates the size of a head. So I can work this two ways. The first is to work it using just the arms away from the body in this manner. The second is to begin incorporating the body using one arm to rotate that on the body as I would use my torso as a fulcrum, as a pivot point. So you see I can play with expansion and contraction of the thoracic region. And I begin moving that ball from my arms to my head. So this is very important in those types of mauling bear trap actions. I can start to incorporate my pivot and make that motion more dynamic. So a very simple drill. It's an addictive drill. It's great for sensitivity, for mapping out your movement, and for instinctively controlling a head without needing to think. A third drill I can do with a ball, whether large or small, is to go from my fluid blending actions into elbow spikes. So as I work with the motion of the ball, I look to see how I can arrive at the point of my elbow. Now, one of the most important concepts that we can learn in close range clinching and striking is that elbows need not have distance to be powerful. Simply arriving in the spike like this is extremely powerful and extremely stopping. It's really, really an abrupt change from the fluid to the strong. Even working with my wrist as a sudden bridge punctuating my flow with sudden stoppage is very effective in stopping movement and interrupting patterns. So I go from the very fluid motion of working with the arms and then I see how I can drop from either a further point of contact to my elbow or simply punctuate what's there. So from a fluid motion to flayed fingers, this allows me to engage all of the extensors in the forearm, fluid to flayed, fluid to flay, or fluid and from the distance a small punctuation, being sure to anvil that ball with the hand on the other side. So now I start to learn very, very important exercises, uh, sensitivities for controlling and anchoring as I hit. And this can be punctuated to go from that kind of a motion to more of a hitting action as well. The same type of exercise can be used to train our shiver. Again, remembering to turn our thumb downward to keep a slight flexion within my elbow and to fire from that basic motion. So this is a very simple item. Everybody has it. There are no excuses not to try this one. Really simple. Even a few minutes at the beginning and end of every training session uh, will really boost your instinctive understanding of flowing around and controlling the head and the interplay between working with the arms, working with the arms via the spine, and then working using the spine and the torso as a direct uh, point of support or density. 